Hello everybody, this is Paul the Inventory King. I hope you guys are all having a great day. If you guys could click that subscribe button and notification bell, that would be absolutely awesome. Uh, I don't want you guys to miss out on any future content, so if you subscribe and hit that notification bell, you'll be instantly notified when something comes out. We're here in front of the soon-to-be reef tank, and we got some things to do. Today, we are plumbing the sump. That's right, we are going to plumb the sump my goal is to make this a show piece, not just a show tank, but a show filtration system. So we need to start now. Let's go. Bam. All right. We are at the reef tank. Oh man, we got some plumbing to do. We got to get the sump plumbed. All right, so let's take a look at everything we got here. So I picked up some shop rags to clean up the glue. We got some adapters, reducers, teak pipes, some unions, we got some elbows, we got some red PVC pipe, two different sizes, we got the glue, and uh, this here is a true union ball valve, so I'm going to have these to be able to, you know, reduce flow, stop flow, anything like that. All right, and we got this here, it is a Y check valve, so water won't flow down into the tank. This thing is huge. But what's nice about these Y um, check valves is they check valves need to be cleaned. So you just open this up, slide the check valve out, clean it, put it back, and you're good to go. Not like an inline where you have to re like cut your pipe and stuff. So this, uh, this is going to be a nice investment right here. And last but not least, we got the return pump. Here it is. It is the Reef Octopus Varios 8. All right, so I got the first section all cut out. I wanted to make sure it was all sized how I wanted it. So now we need to go ahead and get it glued up. So let's go. All right, so first things first, we are getting things set. Um, what I did was I went as I went, if that makes sense, I would look at the tank and start to kind of measure and imagine where I wanted the pipe to run and then I started to go from there. So what we're currently building are the two uh, beginning parts of the outlets that go from the tank to the sump. All right, so we got the first two parts done. So now we need to get these installed onto the tank. So now that we got those two pieces made, what we're doing now is gluing it into the bulkheads underneath the stand. Uh, the reason why I have the big piece of PVC was just to get it angled the way I wanted it so that it's set properly. Now we're getting the other side done as well. And I used clear PVC glue, no primer. And, um, you know, I wiped down every single joint because I wanted to make sure that it was a clean job. No excess glue, no blue glue, no purple primer. I just wanted it to be nice and clean. So right now, so we got that pipe in and we're getting things measured to go into the sump. Um, what I did was I went with true union ball valves so that I can control flow and um, you know shut it off, control it and whatnot. And plus with them being true unions, it allows me to take it apart, which is important when you're doing plumbing like this. So I'm adding the adapter now to the uh, part of the sump, which requires the adapter so that we can get the pipe glued in. So, you know, a lot of gluing, a lot of measuring, a lot of wiping down the excess glue. Really important to make sure that, um, you know, obviously we know to dry fit. And, you know, I do dry fit. Um, you can see right now I was using a piece of just normal white PVC. Had a tape measure, measured it, cut it down. And uh, getting ready to glue the final piece on now for the top. And there we go. So that part's done. And now we need to go ahead and get the true union ball valve ready for the other outlet. And you can see we're gluing that in now. Okay. 
definitely plan it out. Definitely take your time. I made some mistakes along the way that uh, uh, could have been avoided if I had planned a little bit better. Um, and plus, after you're doing stuff with glue and just being at the same task for a long time, sometimes it, for me, I slip up and that's what happened. And um, I, like I said, I had some mistakes. Had I not um, worked on this for so many hours straight, I think I probably would have avoided those. But it is what it is. So definitely keep an eye on that when you guys are doing your filtration plumbing. Yep, so after I installed it, I remembered that I wanted to put unions in between. Uh, you can see where I'm installing it now. I wanted to make sure that I had the ability to remove the piping if I ever move. Just so, you know, I can take the sump out and I can take the plumbing apart and it's not going to break or cause any issues. So, we got that first one almost done just all again a lot of measuring and just making sure it's exactly where we want it there's a slight slope on that last part of the pipe which is you know it's all gravity fed so that's a good thing and we got the second one in that's awesome just kind of wiping it all down making sure everything's clean all right so we got the overflow parts installed got these here so when I want to adjust flow I could easily just adjust flow got the unions so if I ever need to do any repairs I can uh, this one is leaning slightly which is better that one's more it's more even really um, it even seems like you know it comes out and then it slightly dips down there so it looks a little uneven but it still is gonna do the jab. Now that the drain area is all done, all the piping's done, we are installing the return. So what I had to do was because the returns are three quarter inch, I went three quarter inch and then I got an adapter to one inch because I wanted the pipe to be one inch uh, just to maximize as much flow as possible. Um, so I had to do a little things to make it work around the plumbing for the drains. Had to do some 45 degrees and kind of mess around a little bit to make it work. But we got it to work, which is the important part. Another thing, definitely vent the room when you're doing this stuff. You're going to definitely want uh, airflow because I was doing this in just a room and obviously lots of glue smell fumes and all that kind of stuff uh, so definitely vent the room that you're in so what we're doing right now is we're putting together the piece that is going to attach to the return pump there we go looks like it's all ready to roll we're getting it onto the return pump now Because I, I did it this way because I wanted to know the height that I was going to have it and then where to bring the pipe from the returns down to the return pump. So now we're installing that Y check valve. Um, definitely an investment, guys. It is uh, expensive but worth it. Um, obviously, check valves are a good thing if you lose power and you have a sump you don't want overflowing to happen. And um, the benefit of having this check valve is with it being a Y you can clean it without cutting it off your main pipe. Um, again, it, it, it did cost money. I got it from Bulk Reef Supply, but at the end of the day, I felt it was an investment worth every, every single dollar because um, I didn't want to have to continue to cut things and re-glue when I had to clean check valves because you will need to clean them. Now we are getting a section together that is going to attach to the true union ball valve you can see on the right side there little tip if you are using white fittings and it's got like barcodes on them and stuff you can use the glue you got to be quick about it but you can use the glue and rub it onto the ink and it'll um, it'll like dissolve it and then you wipe it with a rag and it'll come off so you definitely got to wipe it quick but it'll work 
and I tried to go generous on the glue because again I'm not using primer I wanted to make sure that I was doing the best that I could to avoid leaks so right now I am drilling uh, as you can see I already drilled a hole uh, into the back of the stand and what I'm doing is putting this desk grommet into the back so that I can feed cord through it. I wanted this to be a very clean job that was important to me. I'm gonna have to find out a better way to keep those grommets secure um, and I'll let you guys know when I do. But back to the plumbing, back to gluing, wiping things down. I ended up going with microfiber at the end to wipe it down because it was a lot cleaner. When I was doing the red rags, it did leave a little bit of red residue from the rag because of the glue. So um, when you guys are getting rags, get some microfiber cloth. It worked a lot better. It was a lot cleaner. So you can see we are installing that piece that has the 45 degrees so that we can get behind the drain plumbing. One thing I did too is because the sump's in place, I just had a towel over it when I was working like above the sump so that no glue would drop into it. So that's a little something to keep in mind. Now this part was tough because of everything being installed already. I had to, you know, get that T-pipe installed and then I had to bend both pipes on each side in order to get the last part in. And obviously when you are doing plumbing, it is best to put your glue, if you're only using glue, if you use primer and glue, primer then your glue, but you want to put the pipe into the uh, attachment and you want to twist the pipe some. Uh, in this case, I could not do that, but it is what it is. Now we are building the final stages of the return uh, that go from that T to the return pump. Again guys, nice and clean, wiping it down, getting it all just nice and pretty. Bam. All right, let's go ahead and get a closer look. All right, we are all plumbed. We're done. Now the goal is let it dry for a handful of days because I did not use primer and uh, hopefully no leaks once I get to that point. This sump again is from ProClear Aquatic Systems. This is the Red Flex 300. And I want to say thanks again to ProClear Aquatic Systems for sponsoring this build. So again, you can see we got the red PVC pipe with the white fittings. Uh, got some gray and red on the true union fitting. So these are ball valves with unions on both sides um, to go ahead and take it all apart. I tried to make it as symmetrical as possible. Uh, when I came back from the store, I noticed that that one, uh, that uh, reducer was um a little different than that one so but uh <laughs> oh well and then we got this check valve here um definitely worth the money because with it being a y check valve you just take this off and you clean it and you rock and roll uh and no longer uh have to you know tear it apart if it's you know in between because these things do need to get cleaned um obviously we got the reef octopus return pump which uh is going to be awesome and you can also see i got some grommets into the back of the stand got one down there actually got two of them down there got two of them down there actually uh just so i can route everything and just so it stays nice and clean again i want this to be a showpiece and uh, it starts with making sure that everything is nice and clean. So what do you guys think of how this sucker's looking? Um, I think it came out great. Uh, I cannot wait to get this thing going. I mean, I know I keep saying that, uh, but it's a long time coming. Uh, just had a lot of things going on and uh the salt had to take a back burner for a bit but we are in full force getting this thing going and um it's gonna rock and roll what i need to do is i need to install the rodi unit now so that we could get that purified water i already got the salt i already got the trash cans to mix it with 
So I just need to pick up a heater or two, uh, or three, because I got three cans actually. Uh, and then I need to mix the salt. I got the rocks, I just gotta scape it. And once I got the salt water ready to roll, I scape it. I like the scape and then go ahead and put the uh, sand in there. We fill this thing up and we're gonna be in the cycling stage. Um, this is gonna be awesome. So some other things coming up on this reef tank to look forward to. We got a skimmer coming in that we're going to unbox and uh, put it together and stick it here in the sump. So keep an eye out for that video. We're gonna do a video more in depth on the Reef Octopus return pump, which is down over there. And we got some things going on in the fish room that we needed to talk about. So we got a lot, we got a lot going on here in my world. So, so comment down below everybody. What do you guys think of the plumbing that uh, we did here on the sump? Uh, I went red and white, of course, as you can see, cause it matches the sump. I wanted it all to be symmetrical and matching and all that good stuff. Um, so comment down below, what do you guys think of the work? Uh, if you could like this video, that'd be awesome. If you could share it, that'd be epic. And um, I uh, would be honored if you guys could click that subscribe button and become subscribers. Uh, and also that notification bell so you guys are not going to miss any future content. Like I mentioned, we got tons of stuff going on and uh, more videos to come. So thank you everybody for watching. Stay tanked.